static equilibrium at high redshift galaxies. Okay, you'll have 10 minutes and three minutes. All right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, my, my name is Michael, Michael. And, and I will talk about the genes in hydrostatic equilibrium in hydrostatic galaxies. galaxies. Uh, this, this is work I've been doing with Abishai in, in Jerusalem. And the main motivation is if you measure kinematics, how can you estimate the total mass of galaxies, including dark matter? So if you have the velocities, how can you get the total mass? And uh, what I've been doing is I've been analyzing the Baylor simulations like a lot of people here that were run by Anis Severino, which are very high resolution and do like all kinds of feedback physics. And um, I'm focusing on galaxy formation in its most active phase, so redshift six to one. And there is this event called compaction, uh, where you will hear a lot more about this already heard. And compaction basically means that you have gas that's coming in and it's compactifying to a very central, dense, star-forming blob, so to speak. And afterwards, you build nice disks. And this usually happens at the stellar mass of uh, 10 to 9.5. This is important for this talk because it shows a clear transition in the properties named that you build the disk. So let's estimate total masses. And um, at the beginning, let's assume that you have cylindrical symmetry and equilibrium along radial direction. Then you can write down the Jeans equation like this. And this velocity here, we see the circular velocity. It's not really a physical observable velocity. It's more like it's defined as the potential gradient. And this is particularly interesting because it scales with the total mass, because the total mass defines the potential. And um, you can do the same thing for, for the stars and for the galaxy. So there it is again, integration. And let me make it even more simple by assuming that the dispersion is constant. And you can just define alpha like this. And you get this super easy, simple equation, which basically tells you that this circular velocity, which scales with the total mass, is just the sum in quadrature of your observable velocities, the rotation, ordered motion, and the dispersion or unordered motion. And the weighting is done with this uh, slope of the density. So, uh, as, I've, as I've said, you can use this formula for the circular velocity if your potential is very symmetric, and plug this in and rearrange it, and you get the total mass. Well, you get the total mass, including dark matter, right? So, if you observe V phi and sigma r, and someone tells you alpha, in this case, I will tell you alpha, then you get the total mass. Um, so there are a couple of ways of getting this alpha. One is for an isothermal sphere. You just use this definition and you get two, or you derive it like Andy Booker did in his paper, or you go into simulations as I did and you measure alpha there because I know dark matter and know how much is there. Um, there's another approach if you don't have resolved velocities, if you have like line of sight velocity or something, but um, then you can also play this game, but it's more complicated than that. Not sure this year. Um, one thing I, I want to mention is that people have been people have been using this a lot, and some people would find stellar masses larger than the total mass, where the total mass was estimated like this. And this, of course, is completely crazy and unphysical. So maybe there was a problem with whatever they were using for alpha. So let's go into the simulations, and these are my results. And I have two ways of measuring alpha. I have one way is just by definition of the, of the slope of the density. And the other way is I can, I can measure alpha from the velocities because here I know my total mass. So I plot this in blue and I plot this in red as a function of stellar mass. And you see in the beginning they are very different, but they should be exactly the same. The Jeans equation is, is true. And only after compaction, and this is why I mentioned in the beginning compaction, only after compaction, you see that they are identical. And this is because here a nice stellar disk has formed and the Jeans equation is likely to be valid. Um, yeah, okay, the, the error that you make here is of, let's say, maybe 20%. And there are a couple of corrections that I've been playing with. 
Well, most importantly, I checked how important is this assumption that sigma is constant, and you don't make a big mistake. If you correct for this, then your your lines uh, increase a little bit, and you have, but you can compensate this by accounting for non-spherical uh, potential. So this was the bulge. What about stars in the disk? So here again is the two definitions, how I measure alpha, and they should be the same, as a function of stellar mass. And you see at, at RE of the disk, and you see that after compaction, they're well, almost identical. Before that, it's not too bad. The, 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 the difference is, you know, it's not too big, the difference. You can still probably use those, those values, but you make some mistake. Um, so, but in the disk, I can, in, in addition, I can plot uh, those two values as a function of radius. And I plot here up to, let's say, 6 Re, so all the way out. And you see, like, all the way out after compaction, so in this regime, all the way out, they are identical, which means that Jean's equation is valid and Jean's equilibrium is likely to be given. What about the gas, the gas in the disk? So this is much more messy and more complicated. So first of all, let me, let me mention that here I, I include in this dashed line, I include a correction for a non-constant dispersion. And if you compare now this dashed line with the blue line, then you see, again, after this mass of 9.5, that they are pretty, yeah, pretty identical. So it's likely that in this regime of high stellar mass, the gas is in hydrostatic equilibrium. So let me, let me look at the, the radius profile. And here it's becoming, yeah, more complicated. So first of all, if you compare the dashed line and the blue line, okay, I mean, all the way out, they are more or less identical. So probably the hydrostatic equilibrium is given for the gas all the way in the disk. The problem is that you see here there are two, two regimes that I plot, and this is because I realigned my disk. I, I aligned it in the inside and I aligned it on the outside. If you don't do this, then your result is, is uh, completely different. And this is because the disk is, is warped and has tilts because of the incoming streams. So um, the message here is that you have to correct for non-constant dispersion and you have to align your disk properly. And the last thing that I want to mention here, and this is very important, is that when you look in this shape of, of these values for alpha as a function of radius, it's completely different than what you would expect for an exponential disk, which would go linearly with r, which would go something like, like this. And this is probably because the disks are not exponential, I'm pretty sure of that, and probably also not self-gravitating. So in the last two minutes, I will briefly show you another trick, how to get alpha. And this is where you can start with the, with the Cersic profile, which of course depends on the Cersic index. And you take this and you integrate it to get a three-dimensional uh, density, and then you just plug it in into the definition of alpha. So this alpha, in some way, through this integration, this alpha will depend on n, on your Cersic index. So this is what I, what I show here as, as uh, solid lines. So this is now as a function of Cersic index. And these solid lines are the results from this crazy integration where you get alpha as a function of index for several radii. And I, I fit in my simulations, I fit uh, Cersic index in the bulge and in the disk. And I, I obtain uh, the Cersic index in the simulation and I measure alpha v and alpha rho again, and you see there is great agreement between these predictions and my measurement. So, uh, in other words, I can give you the results, the solid lines, for alpha as a function of n, and you can use that to estimate your total mass if you have a Cersic index. And with this, I will sum up my talk. So, I've shown you that there's this very simple, nice genes equation, that people use to estimate the total mass because this circular velocity depends on the total mass. And you can rearrange this. But there has been some tensions or some problems because people used all kinds of stuff for alpha and they found stellar mass larger than the total mass. So clearly there is 
is a, is a problem. So I've shown in my talk that after compaction, after this magical mass, uh, this whole business of Jeans equation in the bulge and in the disk is probably correct. You can do, you can do that. And in the disk, it's, it's valid all the way out to 5RE. But you have to pay attention in the, in the disk that you align it properly and that your dispersion is not constant. And it's also, there are problems with these predictions from an exponential disk. And the last thing that I showed you is that you can predict alpha as function of this index. So please keep an eye on the archive. There will be something soon. And thanks for your attention. So we should have time for at least two or three questions. Yes. Um, how sensitive is the total mass estimate on this scatter? Well, if n equals four, you don't have a lot of scatter, right? So if n equals four, you're 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 pretty safe here. You can, I don't know, the alpha is two. I, I would I would say maybe the errors of ten to twenty percent. Uh, other, uh, let's see, Daniel. Um, good point. <laughs> so yes, maybe you can correct this this discrepancies by accounting for the non spherical part. Richard, do you want to start? Oh, yeah, see. Um, okay. okay, yeah. yeah. See, I think we need to move on, and um, um, David, you can probably talk to Michael after. When you talk about the source of the source of the index of the gas, okay, well, you gotta keep better control of these people. Um, oh, yes, yeah. it just seems very mean to shut them down. No, the first thing index is of that component. Of, of gas or of stuff. Okay, well, um, thanks, thanks for the, for questions. the questions. I think we need to move on to uh, Elizabeth uh, McGrath um, speaking on the prevalence of massive squares like this in the universe. All right, thank you.